Okay. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And the Bible has taken off. Richie and his flying guitar. Remember that from La Bamba? David and the Bible. No, remember that though? Yeah. I do remember that. Richie! Everybody cries at the Jesus! I haven't seen La Bamba. I used to like watch it once a year. I haven't seen it. So that means I probably got to catch up. La Bamba? Yeah. Why? With Richie Valens and his flying guitar. Oh my God. That's so weird. Why? That's an amazing movie. I know it is, but to watch it every year. I haven't watched it not one time with you. I know. That means we have to watch it for the past. uh, uh, No. Back to back to back to make up. Nope. Richie! So. uh, Today, I was able to. um, Today's our Thursday, your Friday. And I did some more painting. Yeah. We went to go take a walk today. I finally got you to go take a walk with me. Which was nice. Wasn't it nice to go out yeah, for a nice, walk? it was nice, actually. It was nice. Yeah. I, I've been telling him, you know, go take a walk with me. And he's like, nah, it's not my thing. You know what's cool? It ended at a little store where I got some pork rinds. <laughs> but it was cool because, you know, it's it it's not his thing. And I've been, we went for a walk. and I like cycling. I needed... I needed to get out and just go enjoy a walk. So he, he joined me, and it was really, really nice. Um, Even noticed some houses down the street that I never saw before. Yeah, see, and it's it's yeah. nice. So I'm hoping we can do yeah. that more often. Yeah, because even like when, when I started cycling years ago, that's what I liked about it was that I actually saw things that I didn't see driving. Yeah. That's how you found this house. Yeah, actually, we wouldn't have had this house. Dang. If it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanted to bust through like the Kool-Aid man. Mm-hmm. Remember he'd bust through the wall? <clears throat> so, you know, so cycling, it's like you see things different. So yeah, I kind of like walking was even more different. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. But it's it was a... Uh... It was a really nice, um, it was a nice opportunity. And and then we had a surprise little visit from um, Brother Tomas today. It it was odd. It was so weird to hear our doorbell. I was like, oh my God, there's somebody at our door. I know, I freaked out. (laughs) Me too. I had a flashback of the feds. I don't know why. I didn't tell you that? No. I was at the table and I heard a knock. Boom, boom, boom. I'm like, oh, man. The it feds. wasn't a knock. It was a doorbell at first and oh, then yeah. a knock. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, man, the feds are going to come get me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> You're such a door. I literally held my breath. Because we have not had guests or visitors at our door for I was a like, long time. Oh, man. Back to making spreads. Cadillacs. I'm like, wait, I still do that. You know, but, <laughs> but seriously, I held my breath. And then when I heard his voice, I'm like, okay. But we we both looked at each other. It was funny because we were sitting in the in the dining room and we're just you know we were I was sitting in the office actually and then I came to the dining room. I was in the dining room because I was painting. And then and then I hear the doorbell and then a big old knock and then I'm like we looked at each other with these look and I was like should I get that? <laughs> and I come and I peek through the window. I'm like let me make sure if it's safe first. So I peek through the window and then I see. All the tats. And as soon as I seen the tats, I look up and I'm like, oh, it's just Tomas. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, oh, it's nice to have a visitor. Yeah. But praise God, because, you know. What's even cool, too, is that, you know, we're going to get some more work done at the church and stuff. And yeah. He's, he's in a help. He's By the one the, that helped build the walls at yeah, the church. Yeah, he's the one that, that helped us um, reconstruct and do all the walls and do all of that at the church. And. You know, he helped us a lot, so yeah. he's going to help us finish off some of the work and stuff. Yeah. So that's going to be a blessing. We're going to get that, that, uh, the cafe, the cafe done. going, yeah. Cool. So, guys, so, um, I know you had something in mind for today. Yes. What? Are you okay? I'm just messing around. You guys, I got to share this with you guys. So, What did I do now? No, my mom. 
Oh. Like my mama's heart just like she just touched my heart today. You know, I was sitting there and she was just like, you know, I'm going to I need to I'm going to make more masks, you know, because she had been expecting some mask um from from someone that I know and she had not received them and you know, my mom lives in like that I told you she's been trying to make masks for a lot of the senior citizens in her complex. There's over 340 units because she lives on number 349. That's how I know. So um, there's a lot of units there where she lives. And, you know, she's been making a few. I think she's only up to like maybe 15 masks. You know, it's not a lot, but she's trying. She's, you know, making as much as she can. So she calls me today and she says, can I make mask out of coffee filters? <laughs> you know? So it, it, man, when she told me that, you guys, it literally, like, my heart felt this heaviness. Like, I'm not kidding, you guys. Like, I just pictured my mom making mask out of coffee filters i don't even understand the concept that's like, the that's the whole thing is that is she talking about stuffing them with coffee or like making like them trying mask? because she was running out of material so she was going to do part of it coffee filter on the other side material yeah i don't even understand i um, don't know either but she was gonna yeah. make it work one way or another but the the point is is that when she asked me i was like well i guess it's okay mom you know whatever is gonna work is gonna work you know and well, so obviously she had a concept so you're just like go with it right? go with it yeah you know whatever's gonna cover your guys's faces and your mouth you know because she says that there was some people that were asking her for some oh. and you know and and because you know you know, there's so many elderly. She says that there's so many elderly that people don't even visit, that they're just looking out their windows. Yeah, I bet. You know, and, and she... And then depending on what news they watch, they're paranoid to even step out of their apartments, exactly. right? Exactly. So, you know, it, it really... And I told my mom today, and I said, you know, mom, I said, if you see notices and if, if whatever you do, I said, you need to communicate with us, okay? Always stay in touch with us. Let us know what's going on. You know, because I've been hearing about a lot of facilities and people that are not being told of what's going on in places. Mm -hmm. And I told her, you need to make sure that you're constantly communicating with us. You're letting us know what's going on. If somebody's infected, anything, you need to just communicate with us, okay? And she's like, okay, I will. But, you know, I, I shared that today um, on Facebook that I was willing to at least even if somebody sold some for like two dollars or three dollars you know to please let me know I'm willing to buy at least 50 at a time or whatever so that way I can just get some over there to her and one of the one of the girls that I've known since I was a little girl messaged me a little while ago and she's like hey I want to donate 50 masks you know, and then the the gentleman who was originally supposed to get 50 masks out to them messaged me and he says, I'm so, so sorry. I thought I had sent you a message, you know, and um, but we're going to go ahead and ship those out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So the original ones that he was going to ship out, that he was going to ship out 50 of them. So those are going to go out. So that's 100 masks that are yeah. going to go out to them. And, you know, and she's going to, you know, her and my stepdad are going to at least, you know, so that they don't have contact with anybody. They're just going to put them on their doors yeah. and, and go around and put them on their little doors because they're individually wrapped in bags. So I was really, really blessed with that, you know, and it may not get to all of them, but at least it's to a lot of them that yeah. are. I told her, just make sure that you try to get a lot of the people that are much older in age that, you know, that are really, really needing them. So, you know, I praise God for that. God answers prayers, man. And I just, I didn't want to have to see my mom sit there and sew coffee filters. Yeah. You know? So, I praise God for that. That yeah. was a praise report I wanted to share with you guys. Oh, if it really got down to it, I'll get a rubber band. <laughs> like, Yo, what's up now? That would actually be cool. Don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Where are we going to, Zilly? I can't do it with this one. <laughs> you can, but it won't be comfortable. <laughs> Either that or my wallet. <laughs> I like the word better. Yeah. Where are we going to? Oh, sorry. oh First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Primer Corinthians. 
Capítulo 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Vámonos, vámonos. Yeah. This is a good subject, guys. It's a really good subject, and um, I don't know what I'm going to call it. I cut my finger today, you guys. Sorry. That's all good. It hurts. You know, I know you guys are worried because I'm not drinking water, but I have. Because I know you guys really worry whether I'm hydrating or not. I am. So, I didn't want them to worry. <laughs> but Go. I think they really they get concerned. Okay, babe. So, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm going to read it, and then we're going to break this thing down. Oh, oh, first of all, remember we talked about Apollos the other set day. Set the stage. Yeah, set the stage. You're learning. Yes. Um, we talked about Apollos. Remember the couple, Aquila and Priscilla, how they poured into this eloquent, well-educated, spoken man that was strong in the word? His name was Apollos. Well, we're going to talk more about Apollos. So, Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, which is why it's called Corinthians. And he says this. Um, I'm going to start actually chapter three. I'm going to start from the beginning, verse one of chapter three. Do it. <laughs> and I so, dare you. So Paul says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babies in Christ. In other words, he goes, man, I can't even talk to you like an adult. What, what's verse one say? It says, but for right now, friends, I'm completely frustrated by your unspiritual dealings with each other and with God. Okay. He's like, you're acting like a bunch of babies. So, yeah, Paul kind of, <laughs> Paul kind of, he just, boom, just guns for it, you know? He goes, I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now, you're still not able. You're acting like infants in relation to Christ, capable of nothing much more than nursing at the breast. Well then, I'll nurse you since you don't seem capable of anything more. Wow. He's like, man, you guys are a bunch of babies. I can't even, I can't even give you, you know, I can't even give you food. I can't even give you something solid because you're still babies. You know, it reminds me of like little babies that still have a bottle and they're like five years old. You know, and he's like, what are you guys doing, you know? Verse 3, he goes, for you're still carnal. For where there are, for where there is envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? As long as you, you grab for what makes you feel good or makes you look important, are you really much different than a babe wow. at the breast? Content only when everything's going your way. Dang. Wow. So, according to what she read and what I was reading, he's like, listen, I know you guys are still in the flesh. I know you're still an immature Christian. I know you're still big. You can't even handle the solid food. I got to go back to give you milk. And then he goes, so he, I love this because he goes, I'm going to tell you why I say this. Because there's still envy. You're still envying each other. There's strife, meaning there's you guys are still arguing over dumb little things, and there's divisions. You guys are over here splitting up your church. You're doing this. You're doing there. There's a what do they call them? The little groups. Oh, there's a clicks. Little clicks. You guys are still clicks in the church. You have your little groups here talking about this, talking about that. Oh, let's talk about the pastor. Let's talk about the worship person. Let's talk about this. You know, he goes. That's how I know you're still in the flesh. You can't even eat solid food yet. You're like little babies. Okay. So then he says this. This is where it brings up Apollos. He goes, for when one says, I am of Paul and another, I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? When one of you says, I'm on Paul's side and the other says, I'm for Apollos. Aren't you being total infantile? Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, Apollos was very eloquent from Alexandria, mm -hmm. very smart. Mm -hmm. Paul was also very smart. You have Peter over there that was preaching. You know, Peter, like, Peter, like, walked with Jesus. Yeah. Apollos was eloquent. Paul was a Pharisee. So each of them had their strong, strong um, upbringing. Yeah. You know, yeah. their strong reasons. Their why, strengths. Yeah, their strengths, why mm -hmm. they were leaders. And he's like, man, you're being carnal. Did you read that part? Actually, verse four. When he mentions their names the first time. Yeah. Oh, you did? I don't remember if you'd read it. 
Yeah. When one of you says I'm on Paul's side and the other oh, says yeah, yeah. I'm for Apollos, aren't you being total infantile? Yeah. So if if that's happening like like in your place of worship, if there's all these little clicks and this and that, trust me, if Paul would walk in that church, he'd be like, Man, you guys are a bunch of babies. You're over here acting like 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 your adult. See the Corinthian church had an issue. See the Corinthian church would be like, I mean, hopefully I'm, I'm not trying to put you down, but if you're from San Francisco or Las Vegas, you know, Sin City and, and a city like, or New York, like this was Corinth. It was just full of sin. It was full of sin. A lot of people, different people. It was like a, a melting pot of different nationalities. Any sin under the sun was happening here. I picture it like New York, Las Vegas, and San Francisco all wrapped in one. So, Paul had a lot of issues with the church in Corinth. They were just completely immature in the Lord, fighting amongst each other, envy amongst each other. And then, now they are in the church, they start picking sides. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I'm with Paul. Oh, really? Well, I'm with Apollos, and we're smarter than you guys. And the ones, well, I'm with Peter, and Peter walked with Jesus, so who do you think you guys are? And just all this division. And this happens in the church now. So then he says this, verse 5. He goes, who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. He goes, I planted. Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Who do you think Paul is anyways? Or Apollos for that matter? Servants? Both of us. Servants who waited on you as you gradually learned to entrust your lives to our mutual master. We each carried out our servant assignments. I planted the seed, Apollos watered the plants, but God made you grow. He's, I love that. I love the fact that Paul says, dude, who am I? Who, I'm, I'm nothing. Yeah. I'm nobody. I, I'm just a servant. I'm just a servant that shared the gospel with you. Apollos is just a servant who fed the gospel to you. Yeah. I, I love that because it's like, you know, a servant in a restaurant comes and he just gives you the meal, but he ain't the one that cooked it. Yeah. You know, that's why a lot of times we yell at our wait waiter or waitress. It's not even their fault sometimes. It's the cook. He's the one that burned your steak, not, not the waiter. Yeah. The waiter didn't burn your steak. You know what I mean? So now if your meal's cold, that's a different reason. That's the waiter, you know, but... It's like he didn't. Why do you look at me? Because I was a waitress for yeah, so long. Yeah, because I know that's what you're going to say. Because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you say, because a lot of times you're like, this is the waiter's fault. You know, because there's times where I'm like, man, you know what's up with the cook? And you're like, no, that's the waiter's fault. Cook didn't put that plate up there cold. Yeah. The cook put it up there hot. And then a lot of times, I don't know, because you were a waitress before, you're like, our I waitress place, for 12 years, you guys. Yeah, you're like, our plate's been there for 10 minutes already. You know, there's yeah. times you say that. So, but. He's like, who am I? And who is Apollos? He goes, I planted. Apollos watered. But God's the one that made you grow. You know? And um, so then it goes into uh, verse 8. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field you are God's building. Is, it, is 10 mixed with it? It's, it's here. Um, it's not the one who plants or the one who waters, who is at the center of this process, but God, who makes things grow. Planting and watering are min menial servant jobs at minimum wages. <sighs> what makes them worth doing is the God we are serving. Mm. You happen to be God's field in which we are working. Yeah. I love that. He's just like, man, I'm a minimum wage I'm a minimum wage worker you in this thing. You happen to be God's field in which we are working. Yeah. Hmm. He goes, we're minimum wage workers. You know, and I love that because I came from a family uh, of field workers. You know, and it's like, hey, man, I didn't make this tomato grow. I'm just picking the tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just a minimum wage worker, you know, and, and I'm cutting the weeds 
and and other people came and watered it. And some others planted the seed. Yeah, but but you plowed, plant the seed, yeah. and everything. And, but and there's only the one weeds. that can make it grow. Yeah, there's only one that can make it grow. It's only God. Yeah. You know, I don't know. There, every farmer should be a Christian. Yeah. Because they gotta have that comprehension that they didn't make that thing grow. Well, it's just like the the soil. It's called miracle grow. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, because so. it doesn't grow on its own. It's it it grows by miracle. Yeah, miracle grow. So then it goes in verse ten. He says, "According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it, for n- for no other foundation can anyone lay." other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Or to put it another way, you are God's house. Using the gift God gave me as a good architect, I designed blueprints. Apollo is putting up the walls. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Remember, there's only one foundation, the one already laid, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that, man, because, you know, some of you, maybe you left the church you went to or something happened or whatever, you know, but you got saved in that church, you know, and and maybe you have some things against it. Maybe there's reasons you left, but please understand. And let's say now you're like, man, I'm watching these devotionals and man, I'm growing now. Please don't take away from the fact that of the person that shared the gospel with you in the first place. Yes. Because they planted that seed. Maybe they maybe they weren't right in the Lord. Maybe they weren't so right in their teaching. Maybe they weren't maybe that shouldn't have been their job to try to water you. But you know what? They planted that seed of salvation. I praise God for that all the time and I say that mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. I served 22 years you know, and in, in a ministry, in, in, yeah, in a ministry, not house of rest. No, not a house of rest. I served 22 years in a ministry that I may not had have learned what I learned in just maybe five years. You know, I learned identity in Christ. I learned things, but I will tell you that in 22 years, it was positioning me for a time just as this though. Mm-hmm. You know, and I praise God for the the commitment. I praise God for um, for that desire, the commitment, the consistency, the the, the being able to to learn to be that person. Mm-hmm. Because I don't, I truly don't think that I would be the Sharon that I am now in Christ if it wasn't for those moments. Yeah. If it wasn't for that, they taught me that and i love that and i'm grateful for that you know it must it might have been it might have been a little bit on the religious side it might have been a little bit but you know what praise god because i got to learn how to be um obedient and and I got to learn how to, you know, accountability. To, yes, a lot of a, a lot of accountability <laughs> and and how to be consistent. And I think, you know, for me, you know, it's it's funny because even just today a little while ago I was telling you, you know, one of my biggest pet peeves is when somebody says they're going to do something mm-hmm. and not do it. And that's huge to me when somebody says, "Oh, yes, you know, um, you know, let me go ahead and take care of this for you." And then they never do it. Yeah. And that's that's huge to me because I rather, for me personally, I'm not going to say that I'm going to do something and not do it because I, I rather not commit myself to something and not get it done because I will break my back backwards to get it done, you know? So when somebody gives your word to something, you know, let's do it. Let's get it done. Mm-hmm. So it it to me it it's just like you know when we commit to something let's commit to it and let's just try to keep it going even if you just do your best to try to do it you know let's just keep it going yeah so it's important to me yeah I agree and I learned those things from from yeah. those all the, that all those years of working hard in the things mm-hmm. of the Lord 
You know, another thing that ca- that can sometimes causes division amongst new Christians is um, one <clears throat> one will come to the Lord and he has a passion, or he or she has a passion to reach the lost, and then another one has a passion to minister to the homeless. Another one has a passion to teach the Bible. Another one has a passion to visit elderly. Mm -hmm. Another one has a passion to visit those in prison. And what happens when they're immature is instead of working as a team, they put each other down because they each feel that what God has called them to is the most important thing. So they're like, you guys aren't real Christians because you're not visiting those in prison. Another one's like, what are you talking about? You guys aren't real Christians because I'm over here feeding the hungry. And there's people that are hungry out here. And pre- there's people that need blankets. And, and I, 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 I must be more on fire than you guys. And the other one is saying, no, man, you got to read the Bible. You got to learn the Bible. And you got to teach the Bible. You guys are, are over here depending on works. And I'm trying to build myself up. In the, you know, and it just goes back and forth. Yeah. The whole time. Instead of realizing you're a team, that mm-hmm. it's only God that gives the growth, you know? And, and that's something he was, he was like, they're like, oh, I'm over with Apollo, so I'm with Peter. Well, I'm that's why Paul, he talks you know? about being part of the body. Yes. You know? And it takes many parts of the body for mm-hmm. us to work together. And that's where, you know, the collectiveness comes. It, you know, there's, there's certain things where... Um, God works with us individually when he says individually, we're going to carry our cross, you know, and individually we're going to do this. But he also says that we are the church. And he also says, well, guess what? We are the body. You know, we're the body of the church, you know. So there's things where he works on us individually and there's things where he works on us collectively. So mm-hmm. we got to we gotta be able to differentiate the both and know that both of those things still come under the kingdom. You know, it's part of the kingdom and mm. it's part of the body as well. So there's many parts to this body, you guys, and every single mechanism of the body needs to come together so it can function. Yeah. And there's different parts of it. So not one is better than the other. All of it is needed, every single mm-hmm. one of it. You know, your 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 car engine has a, a belt. And that belt is intertwined with the air condition, with the starter. I mean, with everything. Not the starter, but with all that stuff. Water pump and, and all these things. I'm not a mechanic, so but you know what I'm saying. Is is the belt interweaves because all of everything in that engine has a wheel that that belt has to turn the pulley. Imagine having no belt. I don't care how good your starter is, how good your air condition is, your car ain't gonna move. Without the belt. Let me take it a little bit further. Take it further. I am. You guys know that I've had brain surgeries. I've had, you know, the the right temporal artery where they tried to do that. And then I had the Chiari malformation uh, brain surgery. Do you know how it feels horrible when you don't have control of anything And that's exactly how I felt when I went through brain surgery, when I had no control of what was taking place in my brain. And to just know that anything could have happened, could have had happened for me not to have control. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine when a certain part of your body is not functioning and you have no control over it? This is why it's so important that we have to work together as part of the body because there cannot be a part of the body that should not be functioning where we don't have control because we need to be in control of the whole body. The whole body has to function for it to be able to operate. Yeah. You know... Anytime somebody comes to the Lord because of, say, a sermon, it would be wrong to say, yeah, you came to the Lord because of my sermon. Mm. You came to the Lord because of my rap song. Mm. You came to the Lord. You know, it's like, don't you dare take credit because you or I cannot make nothing grow. 
We are minimum wage workers in the kingdom, mm. being servants and bringing Jesus. Point blank, that is it. And, and so when it's like that, there's no room to self-exalt yourself. Yeah. There's only room to exalt Jesus. Jesus says, lift me up and I will, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. Look, do you notice that? He says, lift me up and he will do the drawing. Yeah. And he will bring people to himself. You know, and it's like, we can never take credit. Why would you want to take credit? Yeah. You know, and it's like, no, everything's Jesus. Everything is Jesus. You know, and it's like, and we always have to, have that mind and have that mindset. And it's like, because like Paul said, if you start saying, well, my church is better than yours and this and that, well, you're talking like a baby then. And you deserve to just drink some milk. You know, because that's, that's baby talk. When you're over here, yeah, when you're over here talking about, you know, churches and this and that. I remember I, I went to this, this, um, this outdoor ministry thing at a park one time. And I was asked to come and share my testimony because it was an all-day thing and other people, other people sharing there. I just had like 15 minutes to talk. Me, MC Boulevard was there, other people. And, um, and I heard somebody sharing and I heard a group of people from a certain church. And they didn't know I heard them. And they're like, they basically were like, yeah, our church does this better. If this is our outreach, there'd be all kinds of people here. And these people are just trying to copy our ministry. And I'm just like, are you serious? Like, I'm like, this is a joke. Are you kidding me? Like, there was people that were lost. There was people at this park. It was a neighborhood park in the, in the middle of a gang-infested neighborhood. There was people that got drawn because of, of the music and the Christian rappers and like MC Boulevard. And I'm like, you, I, I wanted to slap them like three stooges when you just line them up. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? I wanted to say that, but I didn't. I'm like, are you serious? There, the harvest is plenty, and the workers are few, and you're gonna waste your time talking about your church could do this event better? Like, what is that? This is about Jesus, you know. And I'm like, that's a bunch of babies, <laughs> you know. And and I just, you know, I've always liked this portion of, of Paul because. Paul has always said, he goes, you know what? He goes, do like I do. So when I read that, and he's humble about it, I'm like, well, then I guess we got to be too. Yeah. You know? I mean, just like, okay, God, you get the glory. I don't make nothing grow. Sharon don't make nothing grow. So God, you give the growth. You make it grow. So I'm just going to bring people to you. Amen. That makes, you know what? That makes ministry very simple. Amen. People want to... You go to you, you you go to you know Christian bookstores and and if you go to the side where it's like ministry side, you know, and building leaders and leadership and this and that, I'm just like, no, we can sum this up real quick. Just be a minimum wage minimum wage worker, bringing people to Jesus. Amen. There it is. There you didn't have to buy a book. Real simple. We usher people to Jesus. We're ushers to jesus amen you know and that's it yeah you know so i just wanted to share that with you guys today keep it short and simple yeah short and simple and um guys i'm, I'm still i know there's a few of you holding out from texting that number <laughs> i'm not gonna let up we really mm. want to connect with you you know what i did today I called people. I know you guys probably i i was in i was in my little office area and then i hear david talking and i'm just like who is he talking to and then he was saying hello to a lot of you and and following up and just saying hey you know i got i got your guys's text you know just wanted to you know say hi and thanks for you know and i'm like wow that's awesome i you talked know? to a brother in salinas i talked to people in modesto i talked to somebody in salt lake city that was beautiful um, man i loved it you know and it's like i'm starting at so far, we have 70 people. So, obviously, I didn't call 70 people today. But I'm starting from the beginning, and I'm just calling one by one by one. If you don't answer, then I'm going to leave a message, and I'm going to text you. But this is a way to connect. Like, I want to know you. You know? We want to know you. So... I want to know you. Text the number. Mm -hmm. You give them the number this time. 
And right? what, what do they, they, so they text that number. So when you call 209, no, call. oh, sorry. When you text 209-497-25, make sure you text H-O-R-C for House Arrest Church. And you, what you'll do is you'll get a response back and it'll be a quick little connect card where you can just it's put a link. In, it's a little link and you're gonna it's gonna lead you to a connect card and all we want is just your lovely name your lovely phone number and your email that's it that's it that's all we want from you it takes like 20 seconds and then you know you're probably you're definitely gonna get a call from from david and after that it's not even to bug you or anything it's pretty much so that you can be able to get updated when we do have our seminars when we have a teaching or when we have something special you're going gonna on. get to, you're gonna get to unless there's something going on which isn't often you're gonna get a text on on Wednesday, Wednesday for Bible study, for Sunday morning, and Sunday morning for service. That's it. Yep. You know, but I am calling each individual number because I want to know you. You know what I mean? And so make sure you call that number. Text H O R C, not Orchata. Oh, I know. He's been getting a lot of Orchatas on there. You know, because obviously your spell. Ch- you're, I feel like you're pushing on me. Let me see. Okay, there it is. But. Don't be getting crazy on me like in front of the camera. Like I was getting pushed, and then I was going to be like this. If I want to push you, I'm going to push you. You know, but um, a lot of you, there's like three or four of you that you doing it so fast, texting H-O-R-C, that you didn't realize that your text filled it out with spell check and put horchata. So I, out of nowhere, because my phone notifies me every time, I'm like, why did somebody text me horchata? Like, I did that like four times. <laughs> like, four different people. You're all like, they want horchata. I, I, I didn't put it together, the H-O-R-C. Yeah. You know, those of you that don't know, horchata is a Latin drink or, you know, Latino drink. It's a rice, a rice yeah. milk drink. Yeah, like sweet rice with cinnamon, cinnamon rice water or something, yeah. you know? So, like, for the past three days, I probably got like four people texting me horchata out of nowhere. You know what's messed up? Is it made me want some. Each time, you know, so I'm like, that's weird. Why did somebody text me or chat I didn't put two and two together that people are texting yeah. me HORC. Anyways. Um, Slow down, guys. Slow yeah. down. Don't send me or chat <laughs> So, all right, guys. God bless you. Have a good day. Have a blessed weekend. See you for Sunday. Please text that number. That way I can an hour before service. Boom, you'll get an email and you'll get a text reminding you, hey, meet us for broadcast live Sunday service at 10 o'clock on Sunday. Yeah. Guess what, you guys? We love y'all. All All right. See you later. Be safe and we'll talk to y'all soon. Bye. Bye.